This fall, the district opens a new high school. It's the Henrietta Lacks Health and Bioscience High School. And to help folks understand the choice for the school's name, the Cascade Park Library, partnering with Evergreen Schools, hosted a community read. It's nearly complete. Evergreen's beautiful new Henrietta Lacks Health and Bioscience High School. Years in the making, Homes were moved and some destroyed to locate the school near Peace Health Southwest Medical Center where much of the students' hands-on learning will take place. But how did the school wind up being named after Henrietta Lacks, an African-American woman from Baltimore who died in the 50s of cancer? This book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, is why the school bears her name. I'm here to represent Henrietta Lacks Health and Bioscience High School. After reading the book, a student committee recommended the name for the new high school, which will focus on math, science, and medical technologies. Most high school names have closer ties to Vancouver. I think um, we, along with the media, did a pretty good job of explaining why the name was chosen. But, you know, there was other folks in the uh, area who were like, well, why would we name it after somebody who isn't from Vancouver? Um, why not name it after somebody like Mother Joseph? Um, and that certainly was considered, but I think because of the focus of this high school, um, this one just really touched the school board and that's why they decided to go with the name. We're gonna be really loose here tonight. I'm Teresa Torres and I'm the um, branch manager slash community librarian here. And it's why nearly 30 people turned out on a cold March night to discuss the book. Do you think the family is owed money for the sale of the HeLa cells? If the family is deserved money, who's going to pay them? Research is always is, is complicated anyway without having to worry about copyright laws. The Evergreen Schools Foundation and private donors purchased 1,000 copies of Lack's biography, making them available to anyone in the community for free. The district, along with the Fort Vancouver Library System, then planned community discussions to help people understand the medical issues Lax case raises. So we're hoping by people reading the book, The Immortal Life of Henry L. Lax, they'll understand not only why we chose the name, but a lot of the issues that our students are going to be studying. Lax had a virulent strain of cervical cancer. While being treated, doctors took a biopsy of her tumor. Oddly, her cells didn't die in the lab and could be reproduced, making them perfect for research. Known as HeLa cells, they've helped scientists find cures for polio, some cancers, and other diseases. An entire industry grew up around Lax cells, but neither Lax nor her family were paid, and the cells were used for research without her knowledge. Add in race, segregation, and the Lax family's limited education, and the story raises all kinds of thorny ethical questions. Is race an issue in this story? As far as her being African American, I think the effect on uh, her children and their lack of knowledge that was where people, it, where they, uh, they failed to inform the family about subsequent blood tests, et cetera, mm -hmm. that were done, I think that was where the ethical question came in. Um, was it a good thing for the members of the Lax family that the author wrote this book? Was this attempt different from a previous attempts to write about the Lax family? Why was this attempt different from previous attempts to write about the Lax family and Henrietta in particular? I think this writer mm -hmm. was more genuine, mm -hmm. certainly did not try and exploit the family. And I right. think in the past mm -hmm. people you know, went to the family because they wanted something from them. This was a woman who was never going to have much significance in her life. She was going to just be a faint memory in her family, and when they died, they were, you know, that was it. But because of what happened to her, we're going to be talking about her for the next hundred years. So I think that's great. A great example of the importance of ethics in health care and an inspiration to the students of Gila High and the entire Evergreen community.